in the last video I talked briefly about cumulative delta which uh, I just kind of want to uh, bring a little more clarity to here uh, there are a lot of videos that are posted online when I first started trading futures years ago I was sort of introduced to a whole new world when it came to uh, just looking at volumes uh, in a way that I never really have before because uh, just on an exchange and uh, on an OTC market you know just the characteristics of all these things they they do look a lot different um, so when I started looking at data like this, uh, obviously I was trying to, you know, basically just get to the root or just behind prices trying to figure out, uh, you know, how do I actually use any of this information to, with any kind of forecasting ability. Um, so when I started going through all of these uh, different motions uh, and started just reading up what others had published over the years, I started to get really frustrated. And uh, one of the main reasons I was getting frustrated is because, um, a lot of the explanations uh, for this type of data uh, really don't put the emphasis where it necessarily needs to be. So in other words, you know, the premise is once again usually uh, taken for face value, which is, is pretty normal with anything really. Um, but uh, again, it's just typically not interpreted in the right way. Okay, so I'll tell you what I mean by that. So basically what this is down here is uh, just to clarify for any of you the, uh, that are new to it, it's just basically just finalized execution. So uh, if uh, you're hitting the, if the bid is hit, uh, then you're going to see red. Okay. Uh, if the offer is lifted, you're going to see green. Okay. So that's really just about it. So you're talking about a matched market in limit order, uh, hitting at the same price level. Um, and, uh, you know, as usual, if you get, you know, X number of limit orders on uh, any given price and, uh, you know, you have a number of market orders exceeds that number, then we uptick and, you know, vice versa. Okay. Uh, so really this is just um, executions stripped down uh, for what they are. Okay. Now, uh, divergences between uh, prices themselves and cumulative delta in and of itself, as is commonly referred to, uh, I don't like, again, uh, the word delta in this sense, because really we're looking at more than just a change in something here. But um, what we're uh, what we're going after is really the heavier hand. Okay, uh, I was learning quickly that uh, this graph down here does not lead anything that goes on in terms of prices themselves, uh, and the reason it doesn't is just because of a fundamental reason that I've known for many years before this, um, and, and that's the fact that uh, you know the, the larger positions, more influential positions, heavier hands. Uh, they're influencing any of these markets through uh, primarily limit orders, not market orders. Okay, uh, and so that is really a, a huge distinction to make there, because really uh, market orders, in a sense, uh, just behave as somewhat of a mechanism used by limit orders uh, in order to achieve whatever objective is trying to be achieved. Okay, so uh, the way we really need to start looking at data like this is in the sense of just limit orders in and of themselves. So in other words, the other side of this. So uh, if we come up here, you can start to see what I mean. Uh, and, and really all we're looking for, uh, just, just to just boil this down to basics, is hidden divergence, okay? Uh, if you were to take you know, your standard definitions for regular divergence and hidden divergence, what you're looking for is hidden divergence. And in the case of hidden divergence, price will lead whatever indicator, uh, indicator you're using in and of itself, okay? Uh, so we're looking for price movements, okay, in relation to this, not the other way around. And the reason we're doing it that way is because, again, we're trying to figure out what the intent of limit orders are, okay? Because, again, limit orders have the heavier hand here. Um, not only that, but limit orders can be forecasted, okay? You cannot forecast this. Don't try. Um, what this is down at the bottom here is literally just, uh, you know, they require market orders, okay? And market orders cannot be forecasted in a traditional sense, meaning uh, that, you know, I have no idea what a guy in Frankfurt or a guy in Tokyo is doing behind the screen of his computer right now. I have no idea, okay? And I can't forecast what he's going to do either, you know, based on whatever information that I'm using, okay? I have no way of doing that. However, uh, I am able to judge uh, just overall uh, positioning uh, or just, you know, weight of the order book based on limit orders. Okay, that I can do. All right. Um, and that's what we're going after. So really, it, it becomes a matter of uh, taking the side of limit orders uh, in the side of limit orders alone. 
uh, because they present us with forecasting ability. There are times when market orders will outweigh limit orders and they'll just take over price levels but typically those are t uh, during times of low liquidity um, they're not nearly as common as the type of influence that we're looking for um, and so you know I always say just you know in circumstances like that just let the market orders win let them have their day that's fine you know um, because ultimately you know when you're trying to forecast something that just generally cannot be forecasted from a traditional sense. You're just kind of lining yourself up for a disaster. So uh, what you're looking for here really is just, a, again, just the divergence between these two. Okay, so if we start up here, uh, we'll see this chart where it really started to split apart in, you know, for, for our purposes here. Um, and uh, if you look at uh, just our cumulative delta, I've got them chained together over sessions too. So you can see uh, just the net result of everything. Um, but if we started up here uh, and then we came all the way down here, we started trading down here. You can see that from uh, this point where we began our initial descent, okay, to the point where we really finally caught up with it. We were still trading significantly lower as far as cumulative delta was concerned, uh, you know, versus prices, okay. So what does that tell me? Uh, it tells me that market orders, uh, more market orders have come in to actually buy okay yet all that limit order pressure has kept prices suppressed all right um, and really that's what you're looking for on both you know the more macro scale and on the micro scale because you could take this same premise and apply it on really any time frame that you wanted to okay so I could take this on this is a 499 tick chart but you know I could take this and this is in this is crude oil by the way I haven't even uh, told you what we're looking at here but um, you know, you could take this all the way down to a one second chart if you wanted to and just essentially just mimic the same behavior. And that's what I do on uh, an intraday basis when I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on in all of these ranges, whether we want to start fading or we want to just basically get ready to continue the trend and so forth. Okay, this is very much directional in nature as far in terms of telling us, you know, where prices are uh, headed next. Okay, so. Um, if we start off at the top here again and we just start weaning our way lower, you'll see that, um, you know, again, when market orders and limit orders agree, that's when prices, uh, excuse me, prices advance, all right? Uh, it's hard to move prices with uh, just groups of limit orders alone because, again, you need, you know, you need that mechanism there to really propel, propel things forward. It can be done, obviously, just you know, basic math, but, again, it's just, it's not as common as when you see both of these things lining up with one another uh, that we see prices really start to you know take off all right uh, and so really we're looking for the sort of the perfect combination of these two all right so here's a first example of something that is worth looking at um, if I go over here and just kind of zoom in on uh, this initial movement over here all right you can see that uh, so we came down lower market orders are selling uh, not nearly to the to the degree that price is dropping, however, and that tells me that, you know, not only are market orders uh, net sellers right now, but obviously limit orders are as well. So there's a much heavier hand coming into play there. Okay, over here uh, we really start to diverge, and and I say that because um, we've got a lot of market orders to buy coming in down here. Okay, and yet, uh, particularly when we get to this point. Uh, prices just freeze. Okay, so we're making new highs as far as our delta is concerned. Market orders buying. Um, we've got a hard cap on prices up here. All right, and uh, prices are not advancing. So what does that tell me? That tells me that there's a wall of limit orders up here preventing prices from moving higher. Okay, and that the stronger hand, the limit order hand, wants to keep prices suppressed and moving the trend lower. Okay, so uh, after all is said and done, what I'm basically waiting for at that point is a uh, just a continuation structure to finalize. And the only reason I do that is just for timing more than anything else to make sure I'm not jumping into anything prematurely. Okay, and uh, I don't have it on here, but uh, typically what you'll see is uh, right around this area, you're going to see a high volume, just traditional aggregate high volumes kick in. Um, and they're going to be unidirectional in nature. Uh, they're going to go lower, okay, and once these two start agreeing with each other, in other words, delta starts selling and limit orders are short, okay, which they have been, uh, that's when prices really start to take off, okay, and that's when you start seeing your aggressive movements, your declines, okay, because really 
these are the types of movements that you need in order to survive. All right, you need to be taking advantage of movements like this. Finding these and understanding where these are and how they all tie together, that's obviously the hardest part for a lot of different people. Uh, when it comes to just overall uh, entry, exit, and execution, uh, generally what I like to do is just uh, always recommend getting in within a low volume node uh, within ranges like this. So in other words, just standard support and resistance levels. So anytime you see uh, what's referred to as a ledge, so where basically where prices, or excuse me, volumes drop off to a significant degree, uh, these are typical support and resistance levels, okay? Um, and um, Conversely, your you know your high volume nodes always come in the areas uh, or these uh, uh, congestion zones in here. Okay, where we've got um, uh, a lot of volume being traded because price is spending a really a significant amount of time in this area. All right, and this is where the bulk of your institutional activity comes in as well. Okay, a lot of people will, well, just a lot of you know common mythology will teach you that you know okay th you know this is where all your bigger players are getting in. Well, that's not true. Um, the bulk of your volume, you know, serious volume is being traded within, you know, the context of all these, you know, tinier ranges here, okay? Um, so, uh, really, that's about it as far as just understanding, you know, from a directional bias where a lot of this is headed. Um, the common misunderstanding, again, is that this will somehow lead prices, okay? And that's a dangerous assumption to make because you're basically assuming that, uh, the smaller guys are in control of prices at all times, which is obviously not true. Um, doesn't take a genius to figure that out. You know, for everything that happens on your chart, there's a logical reason for it. You know, behind the scenes, something's going on. Um, what I generally always advise people to do is just take a modular approach when it comes to figuring out what's moving anything. Uh, and by that, I mean just basically dissecting these prices down to uh, whatever increments you know you can get them into. So in this case, we're looking at things from the market and limit order side of the book. Um, but you know, from a fundamental basis, you know you can go back as far as you want um, because you know the fact of the matter is once this price hits your chart, that's it. Um, all that decision making that's been taking so long to wind up into this uh, price is already there. It's done. Okay, so you need to be able to forecast something. Okay, in order to do that, you need to be able to rip up prices and really understand what's going on behind the scenes of it all. Okay, up here, um, just uh, just give you one more example, and I'll get out of here. But um, you can see uh, we're generally in agreement as far as you know the bulk of this uptrend is concerned where we've got um, you know market orders buying and uh, prices advancing okay uh, for, for the for the greatest majority of things uh, until we get to this point okay we've got um, you can see down here where my uh, the the uh, x-axis is on my crosshair um, you know we're breaking lows as far as uh, market orders are concerned so more market orders selling into this movement and yet you know we're actually registering a higher low over here okay so that's hidden divergence that's where price is leading okay and that tells me that once again you know there's a wall of limit orders over here okay and they're protecting downward movement and so essentially what I'm looking for is just one of you know my my basic six reversal continuation structures down here in this case it's uh, either a square root and over and under overall you know it's it's they're, they're more or less one to one um, and uh, and again what you're likely to notice just around this vicinity are, uh, you know, an increase in volumes, okay? Uh, particularly over here where we see our first, you know, minor pullback, and I, and I, and I do mean minor, all right? And uh, that minor pullback, once again, it just coincides with uh, support and resistance level over here. So hit, 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 hit. Okay, and that's your entry point. That's your takeoff point. That's where prices really start to propel, move forward. If you wanted to just, you know, visualize a diagonal trend line being broken here as well, that's fine too, whatever devices you use. Um, and, uh, and then we go up another leg, obviously, until things start to shift. And once again, um, market orders start selling. But look what prices are doing. They're, they're just static. They're going nowhere. Um, and they're holding this base, all right, as usual. And um, and so what does that mean? That means once again we've got more limit book pressure to the upside, up to fifty-one dollars. We're basically hanging in right now. Okay, um, so you can see how this process just more or less repeats itself over and over again. I'm not going to scale down on this chart, but 
again, this happens everywhere on virtually every time frame, obviously. So you can, you know, you're free to do uh, what you will with that. Um, when you see pressure like this kicking in, and you're looking for pickup points on pullbacks, again, just you know, you're looking for your ledges. You're, you know, where basically volumes, you know, dip off to a significant significant degree. Uh, that's usually where you find your exact price turning points. They're low volume nodes not the other way around okay um, and so really that's about it um, I just kinda wanted to clarify um, how a lot of that is looked at in general um, also one last thing uh, regarding the instruments that you're looking at so this is crude oil right so uh, depending on uh, the instrument that you're trading the liquidity is going to uh, make a big impact in terms of how this behaves down here okay so in other words in this market you know we've got you know a fairly decent distribution of market orders to limit orders but in uh, let's you know it's like a fixed income futures market you don't you don't okay it's you've just got a ton of limit orders really sucking everything in on a you know on a tick by tick basis here okay uh, and same goes for something like e-mini S&P futures which is a common one or um, even um, you know Euro, Euro USD futures uh, 6e um, and so forth. So again, your data is going to vary. Uh, but something like NASDAQ futures, uh, NASDAQ futures are just really heavily driven by market orders. You know, it's like a rabbit just sort of, you know, going everywhere all day. Um, and, uh, you know, so as a result, these nuances are going to be a lot more subtle. Okay. But it really is like anything else. It's like riding a bike after a while. Once you are accustomed to looking at the data and know what you're looking for, obviously it becomes a lot easier. You can see here, you know, this isn't, you know, all that complicated for most senses. Okay. Um, and I always generally just target, you know, higher volume nodes on a longer term basis. So, you know, when I've lined something up directionally, I'm more or less just looking for, you know, these high volume areas uh, to exit uh, because a lot of your deflection points, they can happen just that, you know, they can happen at high volume nodes. More likely they're going to happen around these ledge areas. So they're going to get up to these high volume nodes, just snap them and then, you know, essentially just fade off of them. Uh, and actually, in the case of this high, we're, we would be looking over here. Okay, so this actually is a pretty good example because we're, you know, again, this is if you look at the distribution curve here, you can see this is of higher volumes and, you know, our exact turning point came you know, really just kind of in the middle of it, okay, yet the next one did correspond with a ledge, all right, uh, before we ended up fading off, and then, of course, trend resumption here, okay, uh, so you can use it to track the trend, you can use it to enter it and exit, and so forth, so uh, just a whole bunch of things here, so uh, that's about it, and uh, I'll catch you soon, bye.